What's up, everyone? Welcome to another entry of the Whip Journal. Uh, we are in my garage today. I'm testing this out. I want to know your feedback. In order to get pretty good light, I have to leave the garage door open. And I don't live too far off of a highway and a parkway. So uh, it might be a little distracting, but let me know what you think. I thought it was kind of cool to do it in my garage um, for two reasons. A, because a year ago I wasn't foiling and I was doing my surf reviews in this garage. Within a year, a lot has changed. I used to have about 14 boards kind of rotating over a three month period or so riding them and all that stuff. And now I have just this, which I haven't actually rode in I don't even know how long. And now I'm also starting to collect quite a few foil boards. So where we left off from uh, last entry, apple tree. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram at the Lip Journal, you'll also notice that I've been riding another board. And I've also been messing around with two other disciplines. Um, the two other disciplines I have not gotten video of because honestly, it was just like a little sketchy to leave my solo shot in the places that I was. Uh, I was a little too far off the beach to do so. And uh, yeah. If people know what a solo shot is, they might want to snag it. So uh, anyway, let's get to the boards. Um, so the apple tree. There's definitely some things that after a little bit of time that for me, I wasn't loving about it. Now, I'm a firm believer in every board has a purpose and after riding long boards forever and uh, everything else in between that with short boards you start to realize what you like what you don't like and with every pro there's a con and vice versa so i did love the paddling of this board i was able to get up in waves that were already breaking like whitewater where i would normally kind of have an issue. But here's a few things that I had to do. Um, so I had to shim a lot and uh, I didn't love the idea of shimming. I was a little nervous about the bolts. Um, so I got a brand called Wizard Hat Hardware. And um, unfortunately, it's not compatible with Unifoil. Uh, this way that the screws, the nuts, they, uh, they don't work. Um, or you're gonna destroy the bottom of your mast. Um, so, had to scratch that off. That is now for sale for probably half of what I paid for it, um, if you're interested. So, I did shim a little bit with a regular shim, um, and it definitely helped but I still had this big area in front of my foot and it made it a little hard. Um, someone had mentioned once I go narrow, it's gonna be hard to go wide again. You're absolutely right. Um, I kind of feel like this board is possibly for someone that is looking to bash foam, which it does very well. Um, and also looking to do strapped airs possibly. That's not me, that's not what I want to do. So while kind of riding this, I got the notification that uh, my portal board is done. And this is the portal Transmedium 17, 17 wide. Now, probably a lot of you are saying, well, you went from a 17.75 to an 18.5 because you didn't love the narrowness. Now you're going even thinner. I'm literally biting my tongue from the last entry because 
I love the narrowness. Um, it really does make such a difference for me for what I'm looking to do. Uh, catch points are like not a lot. Um, the cool thing that I really like about Portal is that according to Eric, uh, this was something that he was writing while he was designing the progressions. So since I am practically only on the progressions, this foil board felt amazing with those foils. Um, the construction feels great. There's a few things that I really like about this uh, design itself. Um, you know, with it being 17, he had to make sure that it still had some thickness so that way it paddled great. And um, where he kind of set the wide point, as you can see, the wide point kind of almost starts right around here and it doesn't taper that much. It still stays wide, which allows a lot of that, um, a lot of that volume underneath the heavier part of your body. And then in the tail, obviously super thin. I love this. Uh, it just really helps with, uh, I think swing weight. I think it's super interesting what a lot of other brands are doing or at least trying where they're cutting off the tail all the way uh, and keeping it nice and wide. But I also think that it's important to have some sort of swing weight behind. As you can see, and this is something that I've learned, um, when you figure out kind of where you want to put your mask, that should kind of dictate where you want your back track pad to. Um, anyway, uh, it does really paddle great. And since it's 17, it still allows plenty of ability to be able to pump and turn. And the pumping that I'm doing with this setup, with the progression foil, I actually feel like I'm going faster. And I had my longest uh, on foil ever, which was two minutes and 41 seconds. And it felt awesome. Uh, you know, the connections were super fun. It was a really great day. But also, I give a lot of credit to the setup uh, overall, in general. And the best part is, don't have to shim at all. It's almost like right out of the box. I just put my uh, foil all the way up front and it felt great. And the key tracks are up. And I love that. Uh, it really allows me to completely ride the way that I want to ride my foils. Uh, I'm finding my feet to be so much further up almost to the point where the uh, the center point of where I am is almost in the middle of the board. Um, it's a thicker board, but what that's doing is giving me a little bit more area on my mast. So I definitely find that. And at first I was kind of going way too far up when I was going over whitewater. Um, but I'm starting to figure it out. Since day one, it felt great. I mean, my first wave was insane. It felt absolutely epic. And um, I'm pretty hooked. I don't see myself using anything else for prone. It is 30 liters, again, 17 wide. And uh, winter, is a couple months away so i'm curious to see how this is going to do with floating with that as well with a five mil boots and gloves um all in all this has been epic and then i also uh was lucky to meet someone via instagram that happened to be interested in the Firebolt V2 that I had and got it. Uh, and I was never expecting to do downwind 
just yet, downwind uh, SUP style. And I got this bad boy, which is a Sonova Elite. It's 110 liters. And since then, I have tried winging twice. And for all you guys that said, man, you should really try on a bigger board than what you have, as far as the Uncle Nubby, yeah, I don't know how I could have done it with the Uncle Nubby, just to learn. Um, I can literally just stand right on this and put the wing up and just go. I haven't gotten on foil, but I'm just psyched that I'm learning how to use the foil with the wind, going upwind, going downwind. I'm psyched that I haven't broken anything, um, but it's been a little on the lighter side about 12 miles an hour. So it has been a little tough to actually get enough momentum to get on foil. So yeah, that's it. Uh, a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just forever evolving on this whole foil thing every day just keeps getting better now learning new disciplines kind of gives that like beginner feel too i love that i want to learn how to downwind sup foil too i just grabbed the paddle off um the jupiter kite company uh down in florida i uh, should have that in a couple days um but yeah super psyched if you could please uh don't be too brutal but let me know what you guys think about this new concept i really like it how i can grab things and feel and show while i'm kind of talking about my experience um if you think it's dumb feel free to let me know but also please don't be super brutal um i'm trying to keep this not a review channel where people just rip me apart um anyway hope all is well hope you guys are getting on foil and peace out